page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> The 
psalm appointed for us this morning is Psalm 81, Exultate Dio. We will recite the verses as listed in the insert to our bulletin today, responsibly by half verse. Sing with joy to God our strength. And raise the to God our I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and said, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice. And Israel did not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts. To follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me. And Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies. And turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him. And their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat. And satisfy him with the honey A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you're, you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place to, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. May God's word only be spoken and God's word only be heard. Amen. 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 On first reading, today's gospel lesson sounds like something out of Ann Landers or Dear Abby. <laughs> Dear Jesus, I received an invitation to the minister's house for dinner. Where is the proper place for me to sit? Signed, Jittery in Jerusalem. It almost appears that Luke is filling space with these verses. But we need to avoid dismissing this text out of hand as merely a lesson on first century etiquette. It is really all about minding kingdom business instead of living with a business as usual mindset. The setting of the gospel is a Sabbath meal to which Jesus was invited at the home of a Pharisee. Meals were of profound significance in Luke's gospel. In the story of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke 16, Jesus pointed out that where some eat while others go hungry, the kingdom is not present. Luke, too, is the only one of the gospel writers to tell the story of the men who met Jesus on the Emmaus Road. They didn't recognize Jesus, you recall, until he was at table with them and broke the bread. Also in Acts 11, Luke emphasized that the real test of whether the church is, is inclusive is not whether it baptizes those who are different, but if all are invited to eat together. At this particular Sabbath meal, when Jesus saw how the other guests scrambled for the seats of honor, he advised them to seek the lowest place far removed from the place of honor. Quoting from the book of Proverbs, he gave practical advice worth following in a world preoccupied with keeping score and determining one's status in comparison to others. 
Taking the lowest place avoids the possibility of being humiliated in front of the other guests. If the host asks you to give up your seat because someone more important than you has arrived. However, much more is at stake here than knowing how to say your face. Jesus is teaching about etiquette in the kingdom of God. Jesus' words, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted, really makes sense if we are speaking of life lived under God's rule. Jesus isn't just giving sage advice. He's seeing right through the games we play. The game of trying to find satisfaction in life by looking better than others. Following Jesus means no longer keeping score of where we stand in comparison to our neighbor. Faith in Jesus is all about acknowledging that it is only as a result of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that you and I have received a place at God's banquet table, inviting us when we were most unworthy to join. It's hard work trying to get recognized, to get credit as someone of importance and worth. I'm not talking here about trying to seek excellence in what we do. Using our God-given gifts to the fullest is part of good stewardship. I'm talking about seeking to get value for myself or status or prestige by my achievements or my circle of friends or my financial portfolio. I'm talking about being careful to be seen with the right people, being popular at the sake of turning away from friends who might embarrass you with others you wish to impress. Searching for that kind of recognition will wear you out. It's a heavy load to shoulder, and one that is always perilously close to being lost. But let's look more closely at this story. It's important to note that the dinner party happens on the Sabbath. Last week's Gospel lesson was also a story that occurred on the Sabbath, the story of Jesus healing a crippled woman releasing her from her burden of infirmity and restoring her to a full life with family and friends. <clears throat> this Sabbath, we hear it is us who are released from the burden of having to find honor on our own. Jesus says that if we humble ourselves as he does, if we trust in the promised kingdom by living by its upside down rules, we will find life that the world cannot give. I think it's important to point out here that Jesus is not suggesting that the role of the Christian is to be a doormat for other people. Nor is it an invitation to compete for the coveted title of most long-suffering Christian of the year. Each of those behaviors can be a thinly veiled attempt to still gain recognition from others. The parable's point, I think, is that there is no place for self-justification in God's kingdom. Before God, as Martin Luther said, we are all beggars. The second part of the gospel addresses the host. And again, Jesus is not merely commenting on social graces. Here he is clearly challenging the religious status quo which his host, the unnamed Pharisee, and his friends clearly practiced. And so do we, I might say. Look at the kind of people Jesus tells us to put on our guest list. But when you give a banquet, he said, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Do we do that? 
Such persons were explicitly forbidden to serve as priests in Leviticus 21. In a way, Jesus' kingdom etiquette, like many other texts we have heard this summer, is all about practicing radical hospitality. The Greek word for hospitality is philoxenia, literally love of the strange. In a world where one might never leave the village in which he or she is born, one way to experience the larger world was to open one's home to strangers. Commenting on hospitality, biblical scholar Eric Heen explains, the unknown seekers of hospitality brought news of the wider world and broke open one's little provincial world. There was a kind of marvelous exchange then of mutual benefit between host and guest. The guest received protection, food, and company. Hosts were led out of themselves and their little worlds. Those locked into deadly routine were engaged by that which was outside the camp. In the kingdom of God, hospitality is not an onerous rule or duty. From Jesus' perspective, it is an opportunity to be blessed by exposure to the wider world about which God cares deeply. It is also the means, according to scripture, to entertain angels and even Jesus himself. Remember the surprise of those who are told in Matthew's gospel that as they had done good unto the least among them, it is as they had done it unto Jesus? Hospitality is a gift that feeds and nourishes us as well as our guests. Seen from this perspective, Jesus' advice to invite those who can't repay us with a return invitation makes sense, doesn't it? Dan Clendenin, author of the webzine Journey with Jesus, offers a modern day illustration of the wedding banquet in the kingdom of heaven. He writes, when my, father's, when, when my friend's daughter got married, she wanted to invite their entire church, but budgetary constraints prohibited that. Instead, after the service, they had the local police block off the main street in downtown Waco, Texas. Guests danced in the street and enjoyed refreshments from a Baskin Robbins ice cream cart. The gazebo in the park next to the theater sheltered the wedding cake. The groom had made friends with a number of homeless men who lived under a nearby bridge. As a pastor, he had employed them for odd jobs at his church. Coyote, the leader of the homeless men, attended the wedding in his standard attire of jeans with holes in the knees, a scraggly beard, and unwashed hair. He organized his friends to clean up the streets after the wedding, then sat on the curb with a big smile smoking a cigar. Another guest was the bride's next door African-American neighbor. The little girl loved to spend time with her and really wanted to come to the wedding. So the mother, the daughter, and the grandfather all came. The 70-year-old grandfather was soon the center of attraction as he danced to the street music. Soon all the college girls were trying to dance with him. As people strolled by and asked what was happening, they too were invited to the wedding party. There were guests dressed in their nicest clothes alongside guests who wouldn't have felt at home at a formal occasion. However they dressed, though, every person felt welcomed as an honored guest, 
just as God himself welcomes us and invites us to welcome others. We all want a place at the table, don't we? By the grace of God, Jesus, who laid down his life for us and rose from the dead, invites us to this table that is a foretaste of the heavenly feast to come. Jesus is the host here and has a seat for every last one of us, regardless of our resume, pedigree, economic status, social circumstances, sexual orientation, race, gender, or reputation. Here at this table, we are set free from the burden of measuring our worth by the fickle and shallow opinion of others. Here we are released from our culture's standards of judging ourselves and one another by our power, money, looks, or popularity. We find ourselves at this table by God's grace that is unconditional, never fickle, and always beyond our deserving. So come, there is a place set for you today at this table. Then go with Christ in you, into the world, sharing the good news of this table, where we receive the abundance of God's love and where all are welcome. Amen. Amen. given in form 3, appearing on page 387, page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that they all may be one. Grant that Tony, Chris, Maddie Pussell, Rich, Haley, Vivian, and Lucy Radis, Ted and Jean Ramsey, Alfred and Victoire Rankin, and every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. 
Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our work we come from and Have compassion on the people of Ukraine and all those for whom continuing prayer has been requested. John Coyne, Terry Dottel, our Mishnah family, Richard Hoffman, Boz and Lona de Boz and family, Lloyd, Jerome, Brandon and Michael, Amy, Jim Pender, Jim Lamantia, and family. Liz Russo, Dory and Russ Warren, Fran Myers and family, Stuart and Nita, Ted and Jean Ramsey and family, Marilyn Fisher, Jane Battles, Kathy, Aliyah, Niana, and Samia, Brandon Jr. and Parker. And for all who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their troubles. Give to Sheila Bates, Hazel Butterfield, and Maddie Battles, and all the departed, eternal rest. That light perpetual shine on them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we come to share in your let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son, and his coming in glorious majesty even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have, we have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry when we come into the covenant. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace. Good morning and welcome, one and all. Uh, for those of you whom I've not met, I'm Richard Israel. I uh, am subbing again for Mother Ann while she's enjoying some time away. And so it's my pleasure to be with you again today. Uh, I hope you'll introduce yourself to me on the way out so I get to put names and faces better together. Um, are there particular announcements that we should be aware of? Becky? Do I go first? Go ahead. Um, <coughs> just another thing, not clear, I'm actually just inviting you to please share your um, favorite quotes. Uh, we are trying to 
fill up a 365 day calendar. And we are a third of the way there, believe it or not, and we need some more. So there's a basket in the narthex. Please take no card, put your quote on it today, put it in the box, bring it back next week, put it in the basket, and um, with the Holy Spirit, we will get this all complete. So thank you. Jim? Rich, may I? I would like to uh, make a comment I made before about Rich. Uh, Rich Israel has helped the Pender family on our faith journey for many, many years. And it's always a pleasure when to have them both. And uh, even though this, this particular visit has only been two weeks, Rich, I hope that we'll come back again soon and often. Thank you. Thank you. Gail? Today, in Gaines Mills, there's lots of things going on in Gaines Mills that we overlook. So uh, from 2 o'clock this afternoon to 4 o'clock this afternoon, at the Village Green, uh, there's a happening called Rock Around the Clock. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Bill Haley. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Anything else? Uh, yes, sorry. Ron? Oh. Well, I should say that the better thing that's going on in Gates Mills two weeks from today is the Israeli day. Um, and there's only one service at 10 15. Uh, we have a new grill to inaugurate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll be having uh, hamburgers and hot dogs, and we're asking you to bring sides to complement that. But um, anyway, we're looking forward to that, and I think we're going to have it all pulled together for that day, two weeks from today. Very good. There, there will be, I think, in next Thursday's news and, or Wednesday's news and notes, um, a RSVP button you can press to, to let the people know that you're coming, and also call the church if you don't want to press the button. Just <laughs> <laughs> call the church to guarantee your reservation. <laughs> Without okay. the sign up for side dishes or anything? No, we're letting the Holy Spirit just wing it. Just not wing it. The will take care of it. All right. Yeah, one more. Yeah, Dale? Someone asked me what time is it? It's from 2 o'clock this afternoon until 4 o'clock. 2 to 4 for Rock Around the Clock. And what time is Rally Sunday? 10 to 15. 10 to 15 service. Only. 1015 service. service. Okay, uh, communion today, like last week, will be in one kind only, just the bread here at the head of the aisle, not at the rail. So uh, we continue to take precautions due to COVID and pray for the upcoming vaccine to target it even better so that we get to the end of this long, terrible time. But until then, we take precautions to help the whole community. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and above all in the word made flesh Jesus your son for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world in him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you in him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness out of death into life on the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Christopher and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us see the feast. Hallelujah. The 
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
communion prayer on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, it sends us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, to life everlasting. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.